Hey all, Mike here with Cine Samples, and this is the Cine Strings Core 1.3 Update Walkthrough Video. So uh, I was just demonstrating the the legato improvements. So this uh, everything was built. All the patches and cine strings uh, were now rebuilt from the ground up with uh, what we're calling this adaptive legato engine, uh, and that's all been uh, added to cine winds, cine strings solo, uh, and I'll kind of go to the settings page here and show you what's happening. So as you play, it will automatically. You know, it'll it'll adjust the speed and intensity on the fly for you. Uh, and what I'll do here is I'll show you. This is the this patch here is the one three. This is a new update. And then what I have loaded here is the original. This is what many of you already have currently. It's the one point two update. Um, oh, by the way, we still we have the hairpin creator that we just have it in a sub menu. Uh, this uh, I'll show you how this sounds. So we can kind of do a compare and contrast. And by the way, that's, well, I'll get to it. So what we have here is uh, that's one version 1.2, and here is version 1.3. So it's, you know, just from a performance, I don't know, you can hear the difference, but just from the performance uh, perspective, it's a lot easier to play. Uh, the, the version 1.2 is a bit sluggish. There's delays. Um, and so as a, as a piano player, I, I think uh, it, it works a lot better in that regard. So I'm going to move on. Uh, this is, uh, that's the adaptive legato engine that's, that's added to all the patches. I'll go through them all here in a second. Uh, and one of the features that we've also added here by default, let's go to the, here's violin, violin two. I'm going to go over to the mapping area. So we've completely revamped, revamped the mapping tab. So, to, so you can compare here is the original. That's what it looks like in V1 two. And then one three looks like this. So you have uh, two conditions that you can work with. And it, it allows for uh, a lot more combinations and functionality, whereas this was kind of one dimensional. So uh, there's that. And then also, um, we also mapped the, the breath control to mod wheel. So that as you increase in dynamics, you're also going to increase the amount of vibrato. What we've noticed is that a lot of people hadn't been taking advantage of CC2. And we've received a lot of uh, feedback that said, hey, these aren't getting loud enough. They aren't as intense as some other libraries. So we've added this as a default that it's riding. You can turn it on and off right here with this button here. So when it's off... You know, this is kind of what we've gotten used to.
if we add, yeah, and that was just me adding the vibrato back in. Okay. Um, we also have this accented legato, right? And what that does is it kind of it simulates a bow change legato. When I play it, right? So I'll play lightly, it's just adds a little bit more of an attack to each of the notes. Let's move on to the violas. And by the way, I'm playing legato, I'm playing from the articulations patches here. Um, but as you know, legato is all the articulations patches contain everything. Legato patches are identical. Uh, they just don't have the shorts. Uh, here we go. Here's the violas. And by the way, uh, just a little behind the scenes, we've uh, also improved the, uh, we reduced the voice count so that helps with better CPU performance. A lot of folks uh, who were working on laptops and less powerful machines were having issues with dropouts, especially on the um, ensemble patches. So that should really help with a lot of that. It's a lot more efficient now. not showing you any of the shorts but those for the most part haven't changed right let's go to the cellos here demonstrate the uh Legato. triple forte the whole time. That's probably not accurate. Let's bring it down a little. That's the cello articulation, or legato within the articulation spectrum. And by the way, we have polyphonic legato, um, which is an interesting concept. You have, you know, you can have three notes playing or four notes, five notes playing, and then they still have their own. You can, like, even if you're playing inner lines, they all have their own, you know, legato transitions within the patch. Uh, there are limitations. Uh, if you're just writing single lines, your best bet is to stick to monophonic because then that will allow uh, the engine to control the speed and all that stuff. Polyphonic, there's so much going on behind the scenes. It's just trying to figure out, well, which notes are moving and which ones are staying still. So there's that. And then um, let's see, settings page. 
Uh, we have that full dynamic control. Oh, let me show you the bases. Here is this. Now we've also, uh, we've also raised the volume of the bases. Uh, overall, we felt that the balance uh, for the bases was, was lower than it should be. The original, I believe, was accurate to how it was recorded. But I think for, as composers, we kind of want to just, you want a loud bass, and that's what we do. Yeah. Don't have mod wheel at 127 all the time. It's not going to sound as realistic. Okay, so uh, there you go. Those are some of the improvements to the sectional patches. We have new ensemble articulations patches, which allow you to have control over the instrument ranges within the, the patches. Uh, this was introduced initially in Cine Symphony Light. So if you look, uh, we have the basses, and then this is the, the bottom note. This is where the cellos will start entering, right? So here, so they kind of enter around D flat, and then the, well, that's, you might want it to not be so high. Anyway, the defaults that we've had set up um, are what we're used to in the original version. But this just gives you more control. You might want to have no cellos or, you know, you want to have... Because there's that, there's that the critical point in, in an ensemble patch is where the cellos kind of take over from the violas because there's a significant timbral difference between high cellos and low violas. So that's something that you might want to mess around with. Of course, we have the, the old hairpin creator. This is in all the patches. Um, I, I did a whole video on this, but real quick, you can synchronize the hairpin swells to beats. In this case, it's every four beats it goes up, and then four beats down. Uh, and then you can set it, well, to beats or to a time. This is three seconds up, three seconds stay, and three seconds down. Uh, and then you also can set the the time at which, or sort of the, the dynamic that it hits. So you can have it just go to mezzo forte, uh, but you can also set it to a CC value, or my personal favorite is setting it to a velocity, right? So let me turn it on, first of all. And so I'll just play, you know. So if I play really hard, it's going to go to about a double forte. And if I play gently, or a sort of mid-range velocity, I'll kind of... Does like a... That's about a mezzo forte or so. So it's kind of cool if you're just... don't really have too big of a swells. It's kind of a fun uh, thing to play around with and if you're someone who just likes to write really quickly and you have a you're writing something that has a really steady click uh, this is a it's a great feature to to write quickly with. Usually, you know, when you're writing strings, you got to you play it through, and then you you add mod wheel control. Uh, I personally still like to do that. I want to have great control over what they're doing exactly. But maybe if this is for a live performance or something, uh, this can come in handy. If anything, it's just fun to play with. So there you go. Um, that's a the quick overview. Our website kind of goes into a lot more detail uh, as far as what we've added. And um, 
This is a free update, so it should be in your user area. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.